And, uh, but this weekend, we had a powerful time of prophecy and prayer. And um, one of the words that I was carrying for this region uh, was to wake up and to legislate. And so this morning, I want to share a message call, called Awake and Legislate. Awake and Legislate. And uh, in Luke 9, verse 32... Uh, it says, now Peter and his companions had been overcome with sleep, and, but when they were fully awake, they saw his glory. And I saw this weekend, I saw angels of awakening released into this region and into New York that were waking people up from the sleep. And I was asking the Lord, I said, why are they asleep? You know, it's hard to be asleep in this hour. He says they're asleep because they're feeling helpless and hopeless. Um, their hope has been deferred. They were believing for things that didn't come to pass the way that they thought they were. And they... They lost their hope. They feel powerless in this hour. And so they went into slumber. They went into sleep. And um, that is understandable for everything that we have seen happen since 2020 in particular. 2020 was a, was a very defining year, uh, bringing us into a new era, era where there was so much um, going on and so much offense, so much opposition, so much brutality, uh, so much opposition to the truth. And so we are in this new era, <coughs> and we are learning how to stand in it. We're learning how to fight in it. We're learning how to prevail in this era. And so it's time to wake up. It is time to wake up and get our hope given again. And I feel that for some of you, you have had your hope deferred, but you know, God he understands, he loves you, but he sent help. And there's angels, even here this morning, who will awaken you. And when you do wake up, guess what you're going to see? The glory. It says, when they were fully awake, they saw his glory. <coughs> and so the best is yet to come, and we're going to see the spirit move powerfully. But um, so... That awakening is taking place, but where I want to zero in on right now is on legislating. And I know just from knowing your leaders here that you're well taught on these areas of kingdom authority and the ecclesia and how we are to administrate uh, God's purposes in the earth. So I, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir here. But, um, you know, I couldn't get off of it when I kept, you know, asking the Lord about this morning. This is what I felt him, him, him say to bring. So the word legislate, defined, means to make or enact laws. To mandate, to establish, to regulate, to create, to provide or control to bring about, to establish, or to influence. And so God wants us to be his legislators, okay? He wants you to legislate for him. And kingdom legislation is first initiated in the spirit. We release the laws of God into the hearts of men, women, and children. We release the laws of God into the spiritual atmospheres of our region and our nation of our households, wherever we are, we can release that law of God. And the law of God trumps every other law. It trumps every other law. And we are of a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And so we need to be sure of who we're serving in this hour. It is a kingdom whose atmosphere is love. It is administrated by love. And its foundation is truth. It is righteousness and justice and truth. So we are in this amazing kingdom. We want to bring everybody else into it as well. But God um, is calling us to make his laws known. Now in Hebrews 10, 15 to 17, it says, And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us, for after saying, This is the covenant which I will make with them after those days, declares the Lord, I will put my laws upon their hearts and write them on their mind. He then says, And their sins and their lawless deeds I will no longer remember. Now, when I was born again, the moment I was born again, 
transformation took place within my life. The moment the Lord came into my heart, I started to think differently. No one told me to give up certain things. I was involved in all kinds of different vices and practices and stuff like that. And no one ever told me to give them up. No one said, you've got to stop this now that you're a Christian. Stop that now that you're a Christian. You don't do that because you're a Christian. No one told me that. It's the Holy Spirit all of a sudden changed my heart on the inside and everything was different. I lived my life differently because his law had been legislated in my heart and transform me. And I'll give you one example. Before I was born again, I thought abortion, for example, was something that was a really good option for women who weren't ready to have a child or who were in trouble and, you know, just needed the break sort of thing. And I never even thought of it. Before I was born again, I never even thought that a baby was being killed. I just looked at it as a terminated pregnancy. It was just kind of something nebulous out there. And I never gave it another thought. I, I just thought, yeah, I mean, if a person needs it, yeah, I think that's a great option. But the moment I was born again, I saw things differently. All of a sudden, I have a whole new view on it. And I have understanding the way that God understood it because he put his law of life in Christ Jesus into my heart and it made me think differently. And there was things that I gave up. I, you know, I was telling uh, Trisha the other night, as we, uh, last night as we were talking, I used to swear like a trooper. Every word, every second word out of my mouth was a really, really bad, bad word. I mean, it was filthy, right? But the moment I got born again, when I, when I went to speak a word, I just couldn't because I had a new law that was operating inside of me. Because God had legislated into my life a new, a brand new way of thinking, a brand new way of doing things. Now, we as Christians, we really need to occupy every realm of influence there is. We need to be in government. We need to be in the education system. We need to be in media. You know, our light, we are the light of the world, not the light of the church. We have to have our light out there making a difference. Amen? And so I'm an advocate for, hey, let's go and conquer. Let's go bring our light everywhere. But we have to be really careful not to get out of balance on some things because we need to know what realm we need to legislate from. So if we're on the government mountain, as an example, we can see on that mountain of influence in, in a worldly government system, we could see laws change in favor of righteousness. And of course, we want that. And we should push for that, definitely. We should fight for that. We should be right at the table making that happen. Roe versus Wade is, is an example. We were able to see that overturn. That was a, a happy morning when I woke up and heard that news. I was like, woo, it happened. God, you did it. But it didn't stop abortion. People are still having abortions. Why? Why? Their hearts aren't changed yet. The law of God hasn't been legislated into their hearts yet. So we need to be out there definitely advancing the kingdom and releasing God's laws in every realm, every realm of society, including government, all of that. But if we neglect the gospel being preached, which is our commission in the Lord, he didn't commission us even to pray, he said, I'm commissioning you to go into all the world and preach the gospel, even though, of course, we're to pray. We're to pray, we're to worship, we're to read our Bibles, we're to do all those things. But he said, I'm commissioning you to go and preach the gospel to every creature, right? He's, he's, he's called us to go and proclaim the gospel of the kingdom of God to every individual. Why? Because when they get the gospel God's laws are written on their heart, and they get transformed. 
So we want to do everything all at the same time, right? We want to hit all these realms of society with, you know, getting in there, addressing things, confronting things, preaching the gospel into all these realms of society. But there needs to be a legislation from the Lord himself in us and through us that comes into the hearts of men and women who do not know him yet. And that is what is going to transform the world. And so we need to be in prayer. We need to be in church. We need, need all these things are important, but we cannot neglect the go call to go out because that is where powerful uh, legislation of the kingdom takes place.